The event that would become the International Microwave Symposium, or IMS, was first hosted by the Professional Group of Microwave Theory and Techniques, PGMTT, in 1952. This group was founded in 1952 as part of the Institute of Radio Engineers, IRE, due to a growing interest in the field of microwave research. Now in its 69th year, IMS and Microwave Week are the premier annual international meeting for technologists involved in all aspects of microwave theory and practice. With more than 9,000 participants and over 600 exhibiting companies, it is the world's largest gathering of radio frequency, RF, and microwave professionals. We asked some veteran show attendees what they think about this great event. Let's see what they have to tell us and learn about the collaboration IMS has been instrumental in creating for almost 70 years. Even though it was many moons ago, um, it's still a fairly vivid impression. Um, it was 1977, um, San Diego, um, and I was not quite 30 yet. And so I was a fairly young engineer. Um, and I walked, I don't know what I, you know, I had been to some technical talks and small conferences in the, in the Bay Area, um, you know, 30, 40 people in a room in a lecture. I'm not sure what I really expected, but when I walked into IMS at San Diego, it was just, it was far beyond what I expected. Um, uh, the, the amount of energy, the amount of uh, buzz going on, um, the variety of things that you could participate or see or get in, it was just, I was just, you know, literally, I think I was overwhelmed um, at, at first. It was just so much stuff. Uh, it was also the first year of organized exhibits, and they had gotten such a strong response. It was exhibits out in the hallways. It was exhibits in walkways. You know, um, it, 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 I won't say it was chaotic, but it was just... Um, such a high energy event that um, uh, it made a, a, a very vivid impression on me. I attended IMS for the first time in 1996 in San Francisco. And I went as a student presenting a paper. That was our only way to attend the conference if we actually had gotten a paper um, accepted. And so three of us were in a hotel room three students and uh, we had an opportunity to go to the conference. And then afterwards we ran around San Francisco and tried to go to every site possible. But it was a great meeting. You know, um, there's a lot of constants in it. Um, obviously it keeps growing and new activities get, at, get added all the time. It, you know, I think the biggest change that, that we've seen over time, and it's really been over a long, long time, is, you know, who attends. Um, you know, in, in 1983, it was quite a bit more US-centric. It was all male for the most part. Um, and with time, we've seen a lot more people from all around the world join. Um, you know, a lot more women engineers joining as well. So it's a kind of, in general, the diversity of the participants um, has has changed over time. One thing that's kind of interesting, you know, it's been a constant, um, and I think unique to just a few conferences like IMS is the uh, industry participation. Um, you know, lots of conferences have become more and more academic, and you know, IMS continues to have a really strong participation from industry. And maybe the demographic change that we see, you know, reflects what we see in industry as well. The good thing about what IMS has done is they've worked real hard to encompass a, as large of a share of the RF microwave and moment wave community as possible. And I think they've done a really good job at expanding the opportunity for all to participate. 
I think I have sort of two answers. So I'm a, and I'm, I'm an experimentalist and I do research at really high frequencies. Now I measure passive circuits, but we use the network analyzers. And um, in the last few years, we've seen that um, at these really high frequencies, like 300 gigahertz and above, that either, first of all, the modules to take those measurements exist, but then also the platform to measure those circuits or devices accurately exists with the different companies really taking their probe stations and making them um, in such a way that you can have precision. So that's one thing that uh, if I think about it, I've found to be just quite remarkable um, that you can have a terahertz uh, probe station. And then another one is, is the spare, or I'm sorry, the simulation side of things. You know, every year, uh, many of the companies that uh, really do the electromagnetic simulation, they, they have new advances and they're considering kind of all the problems that we uh, experience. And so as a student, we were either experimentalists or theoreticians. So you couldn't necessarily be both because your PhD would take you the time to get that work done. And so the fact that as an experimentalist, we can come up with some kind of uh, experiment that we wanna run, but then now we, we have access to these commercial tools that will allow us uh, as best as possible to create that simulation that um, almost mimics what we actually build. And so I find that remarkable that every year they keep working on solving those particular problems that uh, people run into. Yeah, I think it was probably um, the automatic network analyzer. I mean, there've been kind of earlier versions of it, but uh, when, you know, HP, which is now uh, Keysight, um, when they in introduced the 8510, that was a, a huge change in the way that we operated um, the accuracy and the convenience of making uh, microwave measurement in the lab. That was a big deal. Yeah, I mean, there's the obvious things that you get from IMS. Um, you know, you're gonna learn all about the latest technology um, in, in all the papers. There'll be some engaging panel sessions where you'll learn more. Um, you know, you'll get to see what is available in terms of uh, you know, what industry is doing in the trade show and what services are available. But I think the, really the important thing is the opportunity to, to meet your colleagues and uh, to build your network. Um, you know, the first time you go is definitely a little bit of a challenge, um, especially for, you know, <laughs> Not, not the stereotype engineers, but you know we tend to be a little bit introverted. Um, so it's a little challenging. Um, you might only know one or two people. Second year, it's much, much better. By the time you get to the third or fourth year, um, you know it, you, you just know so many people there. And I look forward to, um, to attending IMS every year um, for the networking opportunities as much as anything else. It's kind of like a, a reunion week for me. There, there's a lot of reasons, and but the, the maybe the largest and simplest reasons is the networking opportunities and the, the, the ability to meet uh, luminaries in the field and shake their hand and potentially have the opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one dialogue and discussion later on. And then you have the opportunity to, to create your own, so you know, I won't say social network, but your own network of friends and opportunities. And the latter actually proved uh, effective to me where, you know, it's because of the adcom, a friend of mine had an had a very high level speaker coming into town as an expert in his field from a foreign country. And he was having difficulties getting meetings with this gentleman. Well, he finally asked me to help. And, you know, because I knew the right people, I was able to make a phone call or two and the, the people on the other end knew the name, picked up the phone and we had a dialogue and we made it happen. And, you know, as an, uh, a high point of this, I remember at one, one con company we were sitting there 
and the meeting room was just full of people. And not only was it full of people, but there was still people in the hallway straining to hear the presentation from the hall and looking through the doorway like you would see in, in some of these cartoon characters type of thing. It was really interesting to see that. But that's, you get that by being there, not by, you know, social interaction through a keyboard. There's a certain energy, um, a certain um, revitalization that I get by going to the event. Um, you know, in your normal job, you're working with much the same people day in and day out on a particular technology area issue. And um, maybe it's just me, but you know, while I enjoy what I'm doing, it can sometimes get a, a, a little boring. Um, and um, I enjoy when we can make breakthroughs and get some excitement and all of that. But in a week of MTT or IMS, um, you get just a, a lot of excitement going on that kind of re-energizes you. You have this opportunity to see everything in one space. And, and so it's going to just sort of blow your mind and it's going to probably free you as well because when we work in this field, like I said, I think sometimes we just get so sort of focused into what we do, but going to these meetings allows you to see what people are doing like on the, literally on the other side of the world.